as you guys are aware the me too movement when did it start a couple of years ago or maybe a few years ago um has you know essentially been an amazing driving force in order for women in hollywood for the most part entertainment industry to speak up about you know uh you know douchebag dudes or douchebag men in power kind of taking advantage of them in order for them to kind of progress their careers right it's just really 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 sad um thing that was turned into a good thing by these women kind of banding around and getting people like harvey weinstein the fuck out of here right but there's this book that's going to due to come out that's revealing some interesting things about some of the key characters that are involved in the whole me too movement and again it's it surprised me in some respect but also hasn't surprised me because i guess entertainment industry you should be ne you should never be surprised you know Every, everything is up to interpretation so this book is called she said right and it's a title from npr it's an article from npr i'll link it to show if you guys check it out she said is a book by a uh, jody Cantor and megan uh Tauhi, right and uh, uh, and here's, here's the piece from npr which is really interesting um they wore parkas to meetings or two pairs of tights they traveled in pairs they feigned phone calls and hid in bathrooms they said no they changed careers or industries they accepted settlements thinking it was uh, the most justice they were ever lucky to see many women who worked in hollywood producer um, Harvey Weinstein said that they waged a desperate tactical battles to escape his alleged sexual predatoration, uh, predation without spending, without upending their own lives. In 2017, a New York Times reporter Jody Cantor and Megan Talhi broke the story that ended Weinstein's alleged reign of terror and helped to ignite the Me Too movement. Their book, she said, tells the inside story of their remarkable reporting from the first explanatory phone calls to a mountain trail of evidence to a final face-off with the belligerent Weinstein at the New York Times headquarters. They wanted, they wrote, to leave a lasting record of Weinstein's legacy, his exploitation of the workplace to manipulate, pressure, and terrorize women, which is amazing, right? Because I think for the most part, even if Weinstein ends up getting away with it, right? Because, you know, the evidence is proving that he's a rich dude and you'll probably end up, you know... um delaying this fucking decision for years and years litigation after litigation law after lawyer you end up going after people discrediting them whatever it's called even if he doesn't spend any time behind bars the fact that this issue was kind of wrote um spoken about in public and everything was kind of exposed i, I think my dad always said right everything um what's hidden in the dark will get exposed to the light right so now it's being exposed to the light and everyone knows what a kind of creep he was it's essentially it's essentially uh, made all the other creepos kind of hide away, run away, change their ways, or essentially just, you know, completely stop what they're doing, which is great as well for the future um, generation coming up. They don't, they don't hopefully have to go through what the previous generation had to go through in order to make it in Hollywood. And I guess nowadays, with the advent of a smartphone too, maybe this will not be a thing that will be repeated as often, right? Because, you know, back then with gatekeepers and stuff, with gatekeepers and stuff, right, women were put in such a precarious position where essentially your career was hinging on if you're not you were willing or not to engage in these lewd sexual acts with this person right but now there's with, the, with the smartphone and with the evidence of the internet and just in general the industry the way it is and there's loads of women collective of directors and screenwriters and stuff there's loads of kind of support groups that are able to kind of allow women to navigate through these weird industries without you know getting exploited it's a lot better you hope it's a lot better but the really interesting part about it forget all that right is this part there's a bit in here um, that really, really um, threw me off to a bloom. Where is it? It's about the 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 bloom lady, right? Let's see if I can find that. Where is she? Cool. Here it is, right? So um, she said. So it's, it's, here's a bit that really popped out to me. That I was like, oh my god, this story gets weirder and weirder the more you flip it here about it, right? So she said the book about the Me Too movement. So it continues on. The article from NPR says the following. She said there's also a story of both tremendous cowardice and tremendous bravery. Cantor and Taui showed the impersible apparatus of power, um, impenetrable or impersible, whatever it's called, uh, that protected Weinstein. Companies, uh, self-preservation and incentive lawyers um, get to persuading their clients to sign NDAs. Cantor and Taui argue that even some advocates for women profit from the settlement system that covers up misdeeds. They single out Lisa Bloom. And if you wonder who Lisa Bloom is, that's a lady that's always kind of got her arms around uh, victims, sexual assault victims or high profile, especially mostly women um, who are kind of accusing uh, somebody else of a crime or whatever. I think she had the lady that was pictured with Black China. I'll, I'll get a picture of her actually now, so you can see I'm talk, what I'm talking about. But she's kind of front and center whenever there's kind of a big high profile case involving some sort of like lady, right? So here she is, this lady, Lisa Bloom, right? This lady that's always got her arm around people. This lady who's kind of like kind of acting as if the she's the how do you call it? the um 
the protector of, of all women that go through these you know ab- abhorrent crimes was actually benefiting from all this situation because she was protecting Weinstein she was uh, she was one of Weinstein's several lawyers that, that he, he was basically using in order to kind of smear the ladies that were accusing him absolutely insane so it says the following um the reports include a confidential memo in which uh, Lisa Bloom promises to help discredit Weinstein's accusers, particularly Rose McGowan. That's a lady here with a short hair who kind of had a book that just came out recently, right? Uh, I think it's called Brave. So Lisa Bloom, the lady that was kind of out there championing all women and protecting them and kind of, you know, putting her arms around them in press conferences, was actually the one that was getting paid by the Weinstein to discredit uh, Rose McGowan. And Rose McGowan was always talking that there was this big machine in the background that was sniping women and discrediting them. And we thought she was cuckoo. We thought she was nuts. We thought she was just going crazy. But no, Rose McGowan was right all along. There were these higher-ups in the positions of power that were actually trying to make her seem like she was completely nuts. She might be a little bit nuts, but not nuts in terms of making up complete stories about people actually blackballing up in the industry. It's insane. Um, so... Um, it says the following. Um, she said, the member said the following, right? This is Lisa Bloom's allegedly talking. It says, I feel equipped to help you against the roses of the world because I have uh, represented so many of them. She proposes a um, counter ops online campaign to push back and call her out as a pathological liar. We can place an article or uh, um, re her becoming increasingly unhinged or unglued, sorry, so that when someone Googles her, it's the what that pops up. And I noticed that a lot with kevin hart right because kevin hart's going through a bit of a d- dodgy issue now with the whole car crash thing right and allegedly people are saying that it doesn't seem kosher it doesn't seem it doesn't seem like it's all about board the whole car crash what happened during it but if you google kevin hart right now right on your phones and you just check whatever you won't find any conspiracy theories about his accident all you'll find are really kind of glowy reports about he's doing well he's on the mend it'll be the rock making a comment his wife making a comment there'll be nothing about conspiracy theories maybe until you get to maybe page five or six but for the most part for the general public that's how we make our mind our minds up right we just we just do a quick google we have a snapshot of the news we find out this lady this kind of crazy famous woman is nuts and she's unhinged she's coming off the seams she's uh, she's coming apart from the scene but in the reality these lawyers have actually placed these stories in these publications in order to discredit this lady right to kind of make her case uh less to have to make her case let, hold less weight so that when eventually this come this comes out because most of these cases are judged in the court of public of public opinion uh, right they're not really judged in court but if, if it does most people are going to write her up as, as the crazy old feminist lady insane um and it says of the following um of her mother the famed feminist lawyer gloria allard they write while the attorney cultivated a reputation for giving female victims a voice some of her work and revenue was in negotiation was in was, was in negotiating secret settlements that silenced them and hurried uh, buried allegations of sexual harassment and assault but the book has quiet um <laughs> that's in, again that's insane but it also goes to show just how um murky and how weird and how seedy that whole hollywood scene is because i don't think anyone for as bad as harvey weinstein is and he's abhorrent and he's you know he deserves to get buried under this prison if everything that was written about him is true as bad as he is i don't think anyone was under any under i don't think anyone is under any illusions that he's was operating on his own volition that he was just operating as a sole entity they didn't have anyone else being in the background pulling strings helping him out securing him talent so so putting him in the right places um putting in the right word for him i don't think anyone is that stupid to suggest that he was doing this all on his own that no one else had a clue no one else was involved we know they were involved we know they were higher ups you know if you listen to all these comedian podcasts i listen to they were saying that you know there were rumors about harvey weinstein from a long time ago right and people were saying you know if you had your friend a female friend was going to see him for an audition or whatever you'd go along with them right as kind of as a chaperone just to kind of make sure things are okay it was a it was a kind of a well-known secret that harvey weinstein was a bit of a creep allegedly right so it's unlikely that he would operate in that industry which is very small very gossipy and people weren't aware or people weren't enabling him in no sense but you wouldn't have guessed it would be someone like Elisa bloom you wouldn't have guessed it would be somebody that stands next to a black china at a press conference when she's suing rob kardashian is like i'm going to help her out she's a good you would expect someone like that you expect it was you know an agent or a manager but not lisa bloom and again it goes to show just how dicey that whole um um that whole thing is right because i think there is a feeling that if this does go to court and Hype Weinstein has to kind of stand trial that he's going to absolutely call out everybody in the industry, right? And we're going to hear some names that we're probably going to be unaware of, uncomfortable to hear in that kind of associated with him in that kind of sense because 
it's unlikely. It's just impossible that he did it all on his own. He had some help. He had some assistance. Somebody turned a blind eye. And when we find out who it is, oof, that's and and again, I think that's 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 a mark of a person with real character and real honor and real moral compass. If you're in that if you're in that space and you see that shit happening around you, what do you do? This is Harvey Weinstein, right? This is the guy that you know he's essentially the power broker of Hollywood. If you've got real character and real moral um, compass in you, you won't care who the fuck he is. You'll call that shit out. You'll leave the room. You'll t- say something. You'll you'll help out somebody if they're going through something. You will do something. You'll stand up for something. But if not, and you're willing just to kind of pick up a check and you're just worried about your own career and you're selfish in that regard, right? You don't care about anybody else. You're self-centered. The world will only evolve around you. Guess what you do? You conveniently just stare at your little Prosecco glass, your little Prosecco flute, and kind of hope that the situation goes away. But it doesn't go away. Everyone's going to be accountable for it. Everybody. It seems like everyone's going to be accountable for it. And again, I think in the future, it's good because what it shows now is that kids nowadays, you know, you're going to have to be a bit of a doofus to get put in that position again, right? To get to have a dude kind of get you in your change room in a fucking bar for a reading lines. No one's going to have it anymore. Even the most naive of girls is not going to have it. They're going to be like, what? No, I'm not going to do that. Do you know what I mean? And that's the benefit of it. But what a crazy story. I'm definitely going to check out the book. I recommend you do too, actually, because I think it's going to cause some uh, interesting things to happen when it goes to trial. The book's there on screen. It's called She Said. It's by a Jody Cantor and a Megan Tally. Um, it's, uh, the subtext says, Breaking the sexual harassment story that helped ignite a movement. So yeah, really, definitely check it out. It's already won a Pulitzer Prize. I'm not sure how it won because it hasn't even come out yet. But you know, book prizes. Book prizes are weird like that. I recommend you check it out. Probably available now at all good book stores.